Our pop culture lead, tis the season for Christmas movies from holiday classics such as a family vacation that goes terribly wrong when the McAllisters realize they left their son Kevin home alone. That's some crappy parents, by the way. Or all the life lessons young Ralphie Parker learns as he lobbies his parents for the perfect present in A Christmas Story. But since its release in 1988, there has been a hotly contested debate. Is Die Hard really a Christmas movie? And joining me now is Jeremy Arnold. He is the author of Turner Classic Movies, Christmas in the Movies. Jeremy, thank you for being here. And I, and I should disclose, of course, that TCM is part of the Warner Brothers Discovery family, although that's not why I booked you. Why I did will become apparent in just a second. But first, let's start with the, the general theme. How do you define a Christmas movie? Well, the way I define it is any movie of any genre in which the Christmas season plays a meaningful role in the story. So some, some aspects, some emotional truth of the season has to meaningfully inform the story for the audience. So the, the season means different things. It means joy and family togetherness and finding love and compassion and a positive transformation. It can also mean loneliness, uh, cynicism, uh, maybe a disgust with the commercialism of the season. So there's a very wide spectrum of emotion that we tie to the Christmas season which allows for a great variety of movies to become what I would call Christmas movies. You describe, and I do not disagree, um, Frank Capra's It's a Wonderful Life as the ultimate Christmas movie, which and it's actually a pretty dark movie um, when you get down to what actually happens in the alternative uni universe in which George Bailey does not exist. Uh, let's, um, obviously, if, you, if you've made it to 2023 and you haven't seen It's a Wonderful Life, I'm sorry, but here's a little... Here's a little spoiler uh, that I want to run. Look, Daddy, teacher says every time a bell rings, an angel gets his wings. That's right. That's right. Oh, I'm getting shivers just looking at that. So I guess the, the question I have for you is, can a Christmas movie, as you define it, can it have a not happy ending? That is a good question up for debate, and there are... Very few, if any, Chris, there are very few Christmas movies that I consider Christmas movies that have downbeat endings. One of them is a really unusual, obscure film noir from 1961 called Blast of Silence. Another, arguably a Christmas movie, is the James Bond picture on Her Majesty's Secret Service. Lazenby. George Lazenby. I didn't, detect, I didn't have you pegged as a, as a Lazenby file, but okay, keep, keep going. <laughs> I'm more of a Connery guy, but okay, keep going. I'm a Connery guy, but that's my favorite <laughs> Bond movie. And, really? and, you know, Bond falls in love and proposes marriage on Christmas Eve in a yeah. snowy barn. The holiday has worked into the story. Let's get to the real reason I had you here, which is just the definitive proof. Uh, you have settled the argument. Die Hard is in this. It gets its own chapter. Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Uh, I'm glad it is now official. Explain why, in your view, because there are... I don't know what to call them. Skeptics, let's, let's be polite and call yes. them skeptics who say Die Hard's not a Christmas movie. Obviously it is. Explain why. Well, first of all, when people say Die Hard is not a Christmas movie and the other side must be insane for thinking it is, what that dispute is really about is definition. Both sides are defining the term Christmas movie very differently. And so for someone, it may really not be a Christmas movie and that's fine for them, but for the rest of us, it is. And the reason I think it is, um, is that it begins as the most common type of Christmas movie, which is some version of a dysfunctional or estranged family trying to reconcile on Christmas. In this case, John and Holly McLean. Holly, I'd like Holly, to note. Yes. Her name's Holly. Yes, changed from the source material. Right. Her name was Stephanie. Uh, so that is the story that is happening before the terrorists come and take over Nakatomi Plaza. And what that does is it grounds the audience to see the whole movie that follows through the prism of this Christmas time family reconciliation story. And a Christmas miracle, if I There's, may say. Right, there are references to Christmas all throughout the movie, in the dialogue, in the visuals, on the soundtrack, uh, sound effects. Christmas, ho, 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 now I've got a machine gun. Exactly. Christmas, I think, does a lot to lighten the tone of yeah. Die Hard 2. It's a violent movie, but it's not cruel or unpleasantly violent. It's, it's cheerful and joyful, and that connects it to the season, too. Here's just a little clip uh, from the start of the film, John McClane on his way to visit Holly, <clears throat> Holly in Los Angeles for Christmas. The driver, Argyle, asks uh, if he wants to listen to some music. <laughs> 
Hey, that'll work. You got any Christmas music? This is Christmas music. It was December 24th on Hollis Avenue, the dark. So, one other point I'd like to make about the Die Hard uh, it being a Christmas movie, and, and honestly, I, I could do two hours just on this topic, is the key moment of the film where John McClane, and again, this movie's been out for a little while, so I'm sorry, but spoiler alert, uh, when, when John McClane saves the day, uh, saves his wife, kills Hans Gruber and another bad guy, he's only able to do because of the presence of presents. There are Christmas presents there, and he uses the tape. I'm not going to give more than yes. that away, but... Obviously, definitionally, this could not have happened, this miracle, any other holiday. Right. It, it, it definitely makes us aware of that connection in that moment. And here's the thing. If Die Hard were set at another time of year, the story could still work. You could still have this story. But what Christmas does, it, it enhances all these emotions and rituals that we recognize as linked to the season and intensifies them. It, you know, Christmas does that to the highs and the lows. It's a Wonderful Life is powerful because the despair that Jimmy Stewart feels is so greatly enhanced by the fact that he's feeling it at Christmas time. Yeah. Die Hard, it could work on a day other than Christmas, but it would not be the same movie. Well, if it were Arbor Day, then he wouldn't have had the Christmas tape and then Hollywood <laughs> died. Exactly. That's pretty clear. Um, Jeremy Arnold, um, the book is A Christmas in the Movies. Before you go, what is your favorite Christmas movie? It's a Wonderful Life, yeah. because it's the ultimate one for the reasons we just talked yeah, about. Yeah, it's a yeah. beautiful film. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for being here. Really good to see you. Thank you.